Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. Today's uh, Woodblock Wednesday is dedicated on a single artist. His name is Oda Kazuma, and I think it's an interesting um, topic to discuss because uh, a lot of um, collectors, even some dealers, um, are very distinct in how they address Sosaku Hanga and Shin Hanga. What I mean by that is they see a hard division between those two genres. And by and large, I'd say that's correct. But in the early period of both Shin Hanga and Sosaku Hanga, it was a bit more fluid. Um, the artists who participated in Sosaku Hanga were, were also involved in making what uh, we have now, uh, we, what we call Shin Hanga. And um, some of those artists really were very talented in working in two paradigms. And Oda Kazuma is one of those artists that straddled those two traditions and produced work um, in two different styles and two different techniques and, and, and mediums. So um, I think uh, a closer look at his work is merited. He's a fantastic artist and I have two fine examples here at the gallery today. So uh, without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. So um, I'm going to start off with talking about the very early work I have here. This is a landscape. It's a mountain uh, depicting uh, a mountain in, in Japan, the Japanese Alps. This design was done in 1919. It's a very early work for Oda Kazuma. And for those of you who are not familiar with Oda, um, he was born in 1882 and he passed away in 1956. So he was alive during a very important period in time in Japan's print uh, making history. He was one of the earlier Sosaku Hanga artists. He was very active in printmaking and established or helped establish several printmaking um, organizations, um, some of which Onshi later went on to um, serve as uh, president and, and or a high-ranking member. But Oda Kazuma was one of the first artists working um, in the early part of the 20th century. And his early work is, is actually etchings. He's one of the first etchers and lithographers um, that was working in Japan at this time. And I believe, I think it's Sakino that mentioned that Sakino was one of the only artists in Japan that had his very own etching press. And Oda Kazuma, um, Oda and Sakino had a had a um, had a a really good friendship later on when Sakino was active making um, etchings and other uh, prints using um, zinc plates. Uh, but in this case, this work was done as I said in 1919. It's a, this is a litho, but it also, I believe it has other embellishments. He was, uh, he was a, a, a really good experimenter uh, using different types of mediums. In this print, I believe it's an etching, but there's also maybe some copper um, printing um, that is not standardized in, in, in what you would imagine uh, an etching would be. It also r reads a little bit as a woodblock. Um, I need to study this print more closely. Um, I actually recently uh, acquired it, and so I thought it would be a really wonderful opportunity to show all of you this really rare uh, work. So I'm gonna zoom in so you could see the detail. You can see in here the fine lines that create the design. This work reminds me a little bit of uh, um, uh, Nagase, uh, Yoshiro Nagase's work um, in this period of time. It has a very similar um, 
sort of quality to it. Um, in this in this design, we have a mountainous landscape of Japanese Alps, and they, there's snow on them. And this is a study of light on on the uh, peaks with. Um, you know, it's just basically the the black should be interpreted as almost as snow, as uh, in the you know, in a very um, dark environment, and as the maybe dawn is breaking, you you get this sense of light coming across the 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 landscape here. It also has the feel of a a, a wood engraving. But this is a very large print, um, and usually wood engravings um, are much, much smaller because you're using the end of the grain of a block. So you're not able to get such large scale prints. Also, it's, it's a lot of labor to carve the end grain of blocks. So this would be quite challenging, but it does have that feel. The other interesting thing is that this print actually comes from an interesting source, which I can't really reveal, but what I wanted to say is it's a trial print. The, the, the finished print is, I believe, numbered in an edition of 20, so it's quite rare. And the fact of the matter is, um, I've actually never seen this print in person. It's, it's in a few museums, one in, in, in Japan, at the, at, I believe the um, at Museum of Modern Art, Tokyo. Uh, but, you know, this print, is a, it's a rare trial print. It is not numbered. And the, I'm going to flip it over so you could see. And this is a really cool thing. I've seen this on other prints before that are trials. And it's his signature. Now you would say, okay, does that mean it's an okay printing? And he's he's happy with it? Maybe. But I've I've seen it in, in this is in his hand, and it stands for Oda Kazuma. So that I think that's kind of neat. Um hold on, let me see if I can flip it back. So uh with these early period prints, you don't always get the what you would expect. So it's not pencil signed, it, it's not editioned, but this is a rare early printing. Also, the printing is not necessarily consistent, which I, I actually like quite a bit. There's kind of a roughness to it, which illustrates the, the sort of a Sosaku Hanga aesthetic. It, it, ha it, it doesn't come off as polished. It, it comes off very, um, you know, expressionistic, um, almost as if the artist is experimenting with the printing, which, you know, he would be because the artist himself is producing this impression, which is quite cool. Um, and, of course, indicative of the so Sosaku Hanga movement. But, you know, for a moment, I want us to consider another Oda Kazuma print, it's, I picked this one deliberately. Uh, one reason is that I have a client who purchased it and it's about to go out. And it's such a, a nice print that I thought I'd feature it in one of my videos. But also, um, it's, it's a similar subject in the sense it's a mountain landscape. Um, but this print is a woodblock print. It was produced by Watanabe. And uh, Watanabe was the leading 20th century Shinhanga publisher. In fact, he's credited with starting the movement. And so in this process, Oda Kazuma created the design and submitted the design to Watanabe, who hired Oda uh, in the first place. And the publisher, Watanabe, would approve the design sometimes. Oh, my connection is going in and out. Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes he would uh, make changes to the design. And so basically, this is the final um, um, way that the, the, the print looks. Uh, Oda Kazuma submitted the design. Watanabe was happy with it at some point. Hired uh, his woodblock carvers and printers to, to produce this um, actual impression. So it was a collaborative process. That is what the Shinhanga movement really was about, whereas the Sosakuhanga movement was a self-directed um, movement where the artist um, produced the print based on his own designs and his own printing of the, of the work. So it's exclusively done by the artist, where this one 
was a collaborative uh, process. And we could see uh, the differences in the sense that, you know, first of all, it's a wood block, so it will highlight aspects of, of, the, of the medium. So I'll zoom in and I can point those things out. Here you, you get this wonderful Beren work or these, these lines that were created from the printing. Uh, there's these circular sort of lines, which is quite nice. It, it gives this cloud a very menacing and, and expressive quality, something you may even see in nature, how, how, how uneven and how dark it is in areas of the cloud. You could even see sort of this cool bokashi, this color gradation of dark blue that pokes out through the clouds here. I mean, it's beautifully done. And we have here the, the mountains, mountainous landscape in snow with uh, the sea. And you can see how wonderful the use of light with the yellow that bleeds into the purplish blues and then the darker blues here. It's uh, quite nice. Yes, uh, you know, someone just commented. Hi, Robert. Yeah, the clouds are quite beautiful. They're beautiful. Uh, they're, there's most of this design, the success of this design, in my opinion, is, is owed to the, the way that the clouds are, are printed. It's so fantastic. So I'm going to zoom in so you could, you could kind of get a sense of the, the print. Maybe if I could flip it over, you could also see the bleed through from the into the versal. The you see that with a woodblock print, the pigment bleeds through the paper to the back, so you could really see how the the print was executed. But again, um, you know, again, this is a, a stunning woodblock print and a wonderful example of a Shinhanga design um, produced by Watanabe. And if I could back up again and compare it to the first work, which is a lithograph, which I also think there's some etching in, involved. Um, it's a mixed media uh, litho etching uh, print. It's a, a stunning experimental design by an artist who is quite able to work independently producing work for himself. And, and, and by and large, I, I think Oda Kazuma's self-printed Sosaku Hanga style of make, printmaking is pretty rare. You, you see his work come up for sale, but if you're looking for a very specific design, it's quite hard to actually source because a lot of his prints were done in editions of 20 and 30. And this being pre-earthquake, it's 1919. It was done in edition of, of uh, I believe, 20. You know, I may never see this design again. Um, this is the, the first time I've seen, seen it in the marketplace. Um, and as far as I know, I think it's just in one museum. So it's a wonderful pairing to compare uh, the work of an early 20th century Japanese printmaker who, who was very capable of working independently in the Sosaku Hanga style, and at the same time uh, was confident enough in his, in his work to also work with a publisher who m many of you know that Watanabe was very domineering and, and, quite, and, and, and he did have quite a bit of control in the artistry of the prints that were produced in his publishing um, house. So, you know, Hasui and, and Shinsui, all of these great artists worked with Watanabe, but they were able to work with him um, and allow him to sort of contribute to their work. You know, he had problems with Goyo, as he did with uh, Yoshida, Hiroshi Yoshida, and those two artists were too independent um, for Watanabe to really work with. But Oda Kazuma clearly was able to uh, work with Watanabe, produce work that satisfied him as a publisher, and it sold quite well. And some of Oda's designs that are most noteworthy, and I, I, I want to stress this, they're noteworthy because they're more available, are his woodblock prints. There is another one, uh, Catching White Baits. It's a woodblock print published by Watanabe of fishermen 
on a boat, um, and it's based loosely on a Van Gogh painting. That print is one of his most well-known designs. And, um, well, you know, and it was a published by Watanabe. So in some ways, Oda Kazuma owes quite a bit to Watanabe because he produced enough of his work to get out into the marketplace that we see it on a semi-regular basis. And so collectors are, you know, their interest, um, um, you know, grows as they see material available in the marketplace. Whereas his earlier work, um, like this wonderful litho, most collectors don't even know that it exists. So it's much harder uh, to find. And also, so he's not as known for his lithos, especially his early pieces. But I, I think this was a really great opportunity to showcase both types of work. So I'm going to zoom in on both works so you could see them one last time. And I should mention, again, 1919 is when he produced this work, and this was done in the mid to late 20s. So, the, you know, a few years divide them, um, you know, but it's the process and, and the medium that really is striking and how different they are. Well, I want to thank all of you for joining me on another installment of Woodblock Wednesday. If you have any questions about Oda Kazuma or about you know, Japanese prints in general, feel free to ask the question in the comments below, and I'd be happy to answer them. Or you could private message me uh, if you have any if you have more detailed questions. I'm happy to, to field those. And if you haven't had a chance, please feel free to go to my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. I have a lot of wonderful prints, a lot of information that is there free, and I think you'll learn quite a bit just by by, by clicking around and uh, looking at prints. Uh, all of the prints have quite a bit of information. There's some videos there. I archive all of the Woodblock Wednesday videos on my website, so you can check out previous episodes. And uh, so feel free to have a look there. And if you have any questions, I'm always happy to answer them. So thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Bye-bye.